Well, it is Tech Tuesday, and man, are we so excited about this. We actually introduced this to you yesterday, but uh, this is the first image that we had in color from the James Webb Space Telescope. It was released yesterday. It's uh, the Webb Telescope is the world's largest and most powerful space telescope ever to be built, and it shows the sharpest and deepest infrared views of the distant universe to date. It almost looks like paintings. Yeah. It really, it, it looks almost too beautiful to be real. The images show in vivid detail light that has traveled billions of years to reach Earth. That just blows my mind. So we've asked Nick Anderson, who's the planetarium coordinator and museum educator at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History, to come on into the program and explain to us what we are looking at. Nick, first of all, thank you for coming. We appreciate for having, having you here. What do these images say to you? What, what do you see when you look at them? I think uh, yesterday uh, it really kind of put things into perspective at just uh, how big of a universe we live in. I think you look at those images and every little dot, with a few exceptions, uh, is another galaxy like the Milky Way that contains hundreds of billions, if not trillions of stars. Wow. Uh, most of these stars have a, a number of planets around them, we think, and you know, being able to peer not only you know, deep out into space, but back in time to reveal the earliest galaxies that mm. formed in our universe after the Big Bang. Look at that. It, it, it just, it looks like a painting, like some desktop, you know, wallpaper that somebody put on of, you know, whatever randomness. So we have a few pictures to kind of go through here. That's the first one that was released yesterday. That is a, a part of the, of the sky that is the grain of sand on the fingertip at arm's length, right? That's it. That's all that you're looking at there. It is just incredible how much is in there. But we also want to talk about, is it Stevens or Steffens Quintet? I believe it's Steffens. Steffens. Quintet. Okay, I wondered because the pH is in there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a grouping of five galaxies. Mm -hmm. What does that show? This is fascinating to me. So I think what's interesting is that, you know, again, as we go farther out in space, we're looking back through time. And one of the main goals of the Webb Telescope is to sort of trace out the history of evolution uh, with uh, the, the realm of galaxies. So seeing yeah. how we start with these tiny little, almost shapeless building blocks and how they collide and merge and eventually, given enough time, become the large stately galaxies that we know and love today. So I think in this, in, uh, this image here, you see a number of these galaxies that are closely tied together. We see streamers of stars being pulled out from uh, gravitational interactions. We see areas where there are new stars forming uh, because when these galaxies collide, the stars themselves really slip past one another. Okay. They don't bump into each other, but the gas clouds do collide Ooh. and trigger a whole new burst of star formation. Wow, it's incredible. And I mean, the, the thing that, just you got to lock in on is the light that we are seeing right now left billions of years ago and we are just now seeing it so in billions of years from now if we were to do this all over again we would see something completely different and what ends up happening like well we won't know some of that may be gone yeah. I mean I guess uh, I'm gonna go off to off topic here for a second because as I'm looking at this the notion that we are the only planet that is perfectly distanced from a Sun that could sustain life to me, it's even more impossible to believe that after looking at the vastness and just the complete, it, it goes on forever. There's got to be some sort of life out there at another planet in another galaxy somewhere. Do you agree or am I nuts? I think I'm hopeful. But I will say that the, uh, the Webb Telescope will hopefully pay, play a like, pivotal role in the, the search for life elsewhere in the universe. Yeah. And that uh, one of its main objectives is to look at the atmospheres of planets around other stars in our galaxies to look for any indication that these might be habitable worlds. So at least in our, in our DNA, in our way of thinking, you know, what we know as life, it could be something completely different somewhere else. Yes. Yeah, so dun, dun, what do you dun, know? Right? You should probably not have us ever extrapolating on stuff like this. No, because my mind is just, first of all, that looks like something you'd see under a microscope, yeah. not through a telescope. Right, it's to beautiful. Me. And it's that is almost a, a, a glimpse into the future. So that is a, a planetary nebula. That's a, an area where a star is uh, sort of nearing the end of its life and ejecting oh. um, mass out And by now space. it's probably gone. Yes, yeah, so these will last for you know thousands of years as those shells of glowing gas kind of expand outwards, wow. and it's you know, sort of a glimpse into our own sun's future. Nick, thanks so much. Yeah, for and uh, by the way, the Schaffron Planetarium will be coming back online later this year with big improvements, and I'm sure you're going to have some stuff to talk about now, some new content to throw oh. into those awesome programs. So, Nick, thank uh, you so excited. much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for Appreciate having me. Appreciate it.